I look like my mother? I look like my dad. I think my mom, because my mom is beautiful. <laughs> oh, I'm such a blend of my mom and my dad. It's very hard to say. I don't know if it's a fortunate thing, but my mom. <laughs> I look like both of them. He looks like his father. People say my mom. I think my dad, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of people told me I look like my dad. Does it look like anyone? I don't know anyone. Like, yeah, don't. Probably, probably the postman. <laughs> <laughs> I see most of my mother because she's, um, she's very sharp. I think I have my mom's nose. Uh, the dimples? Definitely my pecs. My curls. <laughs> so my nose, I How think it's I know? like my father. <laughs> People describe their journey of coming to faith in Jesus in so many different ways. One time, Jesus was talking to a religious leader, a man called Nicodemus, and he said this, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. How can anyone be born in old age? Nicodemus asked. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. The expression born again has become a bit of a cliche and doesn't always have positive connotations. But actually, Jesus was the first person to use that expression. And what Jesus is saying is that just as when a man and a woman come together in an act of love that produces a physical birth, so it is when the Spirit of God and the Spirit of a man or a woman come together, a new spiritual birth takes place, and they begin a new spiritual life. Jesus says that to, to experience the Spirit is like to be born again. It's a new, a new birth, uh, in the sense that everything becomes alive. Uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't change anything, and He changes everything. It, do, it doesn't add anything to what Jesus has already said and instituted, but it makes all Jesus has, has said and done alive today. But this is what the Holy Spirit is meant to be. Uh, the one who accomplishes, who realizes, who reenacted the work of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is a relationship, a person. A person. It's a personal love between God the Father and the, the Son. And if human love can change the life of two people, imagine what does the Holy Spirit do with love in person. When he comes upon a person and when he, he is accepted, welcomed, uh, there can be a, 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 a more <clears throat> rewarding experience than to experience the Holy Spirit. I had lots of addiction in my life, many kinds of addiction, smoking, uh, drinking alcohol, taking so many sto tobacco stops and other things, ganja. Although I was doing all those things, but I found there is something missing in my life. One day my uncle presented me a book because he knew that I love books. And it was pretty new books with a beautiful cover picture. Uh, good looking to me and I told my uncle okay I'll read this because this looks very beautiful for me and I started reading and I found that this is uh, Bible all the words is about Jesus Christ and his life and teaching and all it was not for not not like other other kind of books what I have read before some novels some detective uh, books it's completely different. Uh, I didn't understand many things out of those books, but I, I was enjoying it. And I asked my uncle that from where you got this book, and he told me one couple, they presented him this book. One evening, one Sunday evening, I kneeled down for the first time uh, to Jesus Christ. Uh, I prayed, Lord, I am a sinner. 
I'm a sinner. Please, Lord, forgive me. I was crying and crying, and God's Spirit uh, touched me so deeply that I was crying with joy. Uh, I never knew that people can people could cry in a joy. I don't know uh, uh, at what time I slept at that night, but the thing is uh, that very next day morning uh, I got up from my bed and. It was completely new day for me, and my all habits left from me within a night. God can do this miracle because He did in my life. Within one night, all habits gone, a new person born. When I first became a Christian, I thought, "This is it. I've arrived." And someone had to explain to me that actually, this is the beginning. It's like when a baby's born. It's not the end. I mean, it's a wonderful moment when a baby's born. But we don't say, "Well, that's it. We're all finished here." It's just the start, the beginning of a new life. When you come to faith, you are adopted into God's family, and you become a son or a daughter of God. In Romans 8:14 to 15, Saint Paul writes, "Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God." For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, and by him we cry, "Abba, Father." Paul was writing in a culture of Roman law, where adoption into a Roman family was considered the greatest privilege, and Paul is saying that spiritually, through the Holy Spirit, you have been adopted into God's family. You are a son or a daughter of God, and not only a son or a daughter, you're also heirs. And there is no higher status, as Paul writes in Romans 8, verse 17. Now, if we're children, then we're heirs, heirs of God, and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in His sufferings, in order that we may also share in His glory. Now, if we identify with Christ, then it may mean that we face rejection or opposition, but that's nothing compared to the inheritance that we will receive. And there is no greater security than being an heir of God and a co-heir with Christ. But the Holy Spirit doesn't only transform our identity; He also brings about the closest possible relationship with our Heavenly Father. Romans 8:15 ends with the words, "And by Him we cry, Abba, Father." Now you may hear the word Abba and immediately think of the Swedish pop group. But it's actually an Aramaic word, and it's virtually untranslatable. It's like saying "dad" or "daddy" or "papa," but not childish, but very intimate. And it's never used in the Old Testament to describe our relationship with God, but Jesus used it to describe His connection with the Father. And then, amazingly, He said, "You too can call God Abba. You can have the same intimate relationship." I grew up in a, a predominantly Latino kind of gang-infested neighborhood. A lot of violence, a lot of uh, kind of gang life, but a lot of like young families and um, you know people just trying to trying to trying to make the best of their life. I think for me, God as Father, I think you know if you if you come from a background like me, that's like it's somewhat of a stumbling block sometimes.、Um, being being a father, one, and then two, like my own experiences with my own father and. And、uh, you know the term just carries so much baggage. You know what I'm saying? But I think, in a lot of ways, at least for my story, is that is God as a father really gave me something in a in a very selfish but tangible way, something to be proud of, something to to look back and say, "But this is who I am." Fatherhood means family, and family means you belong. Just period. And Our behaviors and our actions don't come from a place where we're trying to earn our position and status among the family. No, you already belong. You don't have to earn that. So function from there. You know, not from a place of like having to maintain your status with with the father. Being a child of God is the highest privilege, the closest intimacy. And it's also the deepest experience. Romans eight sixteen says, "The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children." And I remember the very first moment that I had a, 
I'm a daughter of God moment. And at the time I was struggling to find my true identity. And I felt like God revealed his love to me as a father. And it was at that moment that as his daughter, I knew who I really was. And it wasn't so much of a, a light bulb moment. It was more of a, ah, I know who I am and where I belong kind of moment. It's like how a parent loves their child, only far, far greater. It's the deepest experience that you can have to know that you are loved by your Heavenly Father. And that's what the Holy Spirit brings. It's the feeling that you belong, that you've come home. I've got a friend called Naomi who's married to Steve, and Steve was adopted as a child. My best friend is called Steve, and I also happen to be married to him. And he was actually adopted as a baby. And he utterly, utterly adores his parents, his adopted parents, and they adore him as well. He experienced a home and love and acceptance all through his childhood. And a few years ago, he actually wrote to his adoption agency and asked them to send his birth mother a letter. And he said, I just wanted to let you know that you did the right thing. I know you didn't want to give me up and you've probably wondered for years where I am, but I need you to know that you did, that I've had a wonderful life and I thank you for what you did for me. True adoption is knowing that you're accepted and loved no matter what, that you have a home and that you belong. And Steve has found that with his family and he sometimes forgets he's adopted, even though to the rest of us it's pretty obvious. Not only does the Holy Spirit help us to feel at home, but as we spend time in the presence of God, the Spirit transforms us and we become more like Jesus. Have you ever noticed that the more time you spend with someone, you sort of become more like them? You pick up their mannerisms and their habits. Paul writes, and we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And in becoming more like Jesus, the Spirit develops characteristics in us. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The evidence of the Spirit working in our lives is an increasing love for God and for others. And then there's joy. Joy is very different from happiness because we're not all guaranteed happiness as Christians because some people have very difficult lives and, well, we all face struggles in one way or another. But what the New Testament promises us is joy, which is far deeper than happiness. And then peace, which is not a superficial peace, but a peace in the midst of trouble, anxiety and struggle. It's a peace which passes understanding. It's like the Spirit of God brings about a family likeness, and as children of God, we share in these characteristics of God. It's the Spirit living in us who helps us to grow in our relationship with God, to grow closer to our Father in heaven. Ephesians 2, 18 says, through him, that's Jesus, we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Through Jesus' death on the cross, the barrier has been removed between us and God. And now through the Holy Spirit, we can come close to him, we can talk to him, we can understand him speaking to us through the Bible as he opens our minds to help us understand. And I thought that I had to understand it all before I could believe it, but actually, it's the other way around. One of the great theologians and philosophers of the 11th century, Anselm of Canterbury, famously said, credo et intelligem, which means, I believe in order that I might understand. He said, I do not seek to understand in order to believe, but I believe in order to understand. And it's often as people make that step of faith and put their trust in Jesus, that the eyes are open to understand God's word. And the spirit helps us to develop this relationship. I come from a very odd family, but everyone loves each other and that's how it works. And they know they raised me well and I'm a good girl. 
my mother, like, even though she raised me as a Christian, she allowed me to really be myself. She wasn't controlling. The best thing, they respect different opinions. My dad is still paying for everything. They appreciate what you've done. The best thing is that we've gone through really rough patches, but we've gotten out of it, no matter how bad it is. There's no pressure to be anybody that you're not. The Holy Spirit brings unity in the family. Ephesians 4 says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is over all and through all and in all. The Spirit brings unity in relationships, in marriages and in family and friendships, although unity is not always easy. But St Paul encourages us to make every effort. And unity in the church is so important. So is unity in the global church, between Catholics and Protestants, Orthodox and Pentecostal, and what unites us is infinitely greater than what divides us. And it's so powerful when we see different parts of the church coming together. The Spirit of God lives in every Christian, regardless of background, color, race, culture, and denomination. And everyone's different. Each of us has a different contribution to make. Each of us has a different gift given by the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, four to 11, Paul writes, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in everyone. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit, the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by that one Spirit to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. When I was 16, I went along to church and the guy at front was praying for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that they can make a difference in their lives. And it seems strange now, but a lady had a sense that God was saying to me that I would be a light in the media. So this lady prayed for me and at that moment I experienced the Holy Spirit in a really physical way. It was amazing, my, um, my hands were shaking and I just felt a real surge of energy through my body. And it was kind of like a heat but cold at the same time. It was like a cool heat coming out of my hands and I could just sense God's Spirit gushing over me and it just confirmed what the lady had been speaking about and I felt really excited about what God was going to do with me and I realised that he actually had a plan for me and now looking back at the last 16 years I have been working in the media and I can totally see how God's promise has come to pass in my life. The Holy Spirit lives in every Christian. Every one of us has gifts and the idea of a community is that we all use our gifts. We're all supposed to be involved. It's when we all use our gifts that the church comes alive. The Spirit of God gives us power. And Jesus said, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses. This is how the church grows, when we tell other people what we have experienced. Honestly, I did not want to go to the Alpha Weekend. Yeah, I was about to back out at the last minute. It was like, okay, like there was going to be a commitment. There was going to be a change. And I wasn't sure if I was ready for that change. <laughs> yeah, I was excited to go. The Alpha community was saying, are you going to go to the weekend? And I said, nah, I can't really make it. I wasn't sure if, if I was someone who could connect with God that way. Before going to, to the Alpha weekend, I just, I said, I don't even know what's going to happen, but don't expect me to become a Christian or to ever talk about Jesus when I'm back. After that, it was like night and day, like different thing from coming to the Alpha Weekend and leaving the Alpha Weekend. I was just happy and smiling and like I just had joy. First person I told was my mom. Oh, I have to think about this. I told everyone, I think. 
And I just said, Mom, I'm going home from the Alpha Weekend. Can you get me a Bible? <laughs> you know, it would have been my coworker. We were sitting around and he asked, you know, how the weekend went. And I said, oh, I went to the Alpha Weekend. I was at a treatment center at the time that I went. And um, I just went back. When I got back there, I was just telling every single person I seen. And right away, my entire family were like, wow, what happened to you? And then the morning after that, I went to the office. And um, I remember one of my partners from work, he was like, what happened to you this past weekend? And it's just like, I, I just told him about the Alpha course <laughs> and I invited him. But yeah, it, it was really good. It was a lot of people noticed. Um, the difference. I want to share it and I want to be more bold about it. The Spirit of God was there at the very beginning of the Bible in Genesis 1 and he's here right at the very end in Revelation 22 17. The Spirit and the Bride, the Bride of Christ, say come and let those who hear say come. Let those who are thirsty come and let all who wish take the free gift of the water of life. And that's the invitation. The invitation is to everyone. The Spirit and the Bride, that's the church, say, come. Come and experience God's love for you. Come and experience this intimate relationship. Come and have this deep experience of God's love. Come and have access to the Father, the Spirit, helping you to pray and understand the Bible. Come and be transformed into the likeness of Jesus. Come and be united with the global church. Come and experience the gift of the Spirit and the power of God, giving you a desire to tell other people about Jesus. God wants to fill every one of us with his Spirit to receive the free gift of the water of life. And that's the promise for you. Some people are longing for this. Some are not so sure that they want it. And if you don't feel that thirst, then you can pray for God to give you a thirst because God takes us as we are. And when you have that thirst and ask, God will give you the free gift of the water of life.